if you're looking for a different uh, different approach to control malaria uh, you need to think something else than than insecticides and the idea was that um, rather than eliminating mosquito with an with insecticides you just want to replace endogenous mosquito with uh, a mosquito that is very similar to the endogenous mosquito but we as uh, a modification in the genome that don't not allow to be infected by the malaria parasite so is a mosquito that would be identical to the wild type endogenous mosquito but not able to transmit malaria because we have modified some some genes What they're doing is genetically modifying an actual living organism and changing it and then attempting to release it into the environment, which we have no idea what the consequences are going to be. We have no idea what the effects on the other animals in the ecosystem are going to be. And we have no idea that this animal isn't going to continue to evolve and change as it has over the last you know, hundreds and thousands of years it's already been in existence. <laughs> Mosquitoes don't just transmit malaria. They're food for uh, birds, they're food for bats, they're food for uh, fish, which we actually like having around because uh, birds and bats pollinate crops. In the past, the most successful approaches against malaria have relied on um, interventions which focus on the mosquito, so um, such as insecticides. But now that insecticide resistance is a common problem, we need to either work on new insecticides or uh, alternative approaches for targeting the, the vector population in the wild. And uh, transgenesis is one of these. However, anything that we do in the lab it's, n it's not guaranteed that it will be applicable in the wild and there are all sorts of controls that need to be put in place to make sure that um, what we see in the lab will be seen in the wild. So from proof of principle in the lab is one thing, to putting it in the wild needs a lot of controls, carefully um, controlled field trials um, and lots more theoretical experiments before, before that happens. We do have existing very basic technology that works, mosquito nets. You know, they're extremely cheap and they're proven to work. They're not complicated, they don't interfere with any part of the ecosystem. If we could just get nets to these people that are suffering from these diseases, we would have a much better solution, a much more holistic solution, instead of going and trying to wreak havoc on the environment. I myself, I'm, I'm scared when I go to the supermarket, I see all this uh, transgenic and uh, genetically modified food. So my first, um, uh, my first sentiment is of, of sympathy, uh, which is tempered by, of course, evaluation of, of risk of risk benefit. And uh, I think we should, uh, should consider that malaria kills uh, uh, one million of, of children every, every day. And uh, I think if we manage to develop a, a technology which uh, we demonstrate is safe and effective and can be recalled. So this means that it doesn't entail a permanent modification. Then uh, I, I think that there are uh, solid ground to, to propose 
and feel good with uh, the conscience.